Now, have you ever found yourself needing a 220 extension cord and all you have was just these 110s laying around? Well, I'll demonstrate to you how to turn these 110s into a 220 extension cord here in a moment. Yeah, so these are the things I actually use with that cord. Uh, I've got my uh, little inverter welder down here, a little stick welder I was using. And uh, that black spot right there is actually where I burnt the wire into. Um, I've actually welded up underneath there, welding a little brace up from the uh, angle iron there going all the way across. I was putting up some braces underneath here and I welded it, uh, burnt through the insulation right there. But that's the little welder I use on it. Uh, I also use this uh, Sunco plasma cutter on there. And just want to say that this is a nice little plasma cutter. I've been cutting uh, steel all day, making these uh, things here to hold these ramps and make them more like a fender so they uh, meet state law. Um, but yeah, that's all the stuff I use. I also got a little uh, spot welder down there. I use on it over well. here, the one in red, and basically it looks exactly like this 110, but I've actually filled up the hole so you can't actually plug a 110 into it anymore. So somebody who's not used to my shop can't just come and stick a 110 in there. So I think they do sell them like this, but I just didn't have it, so I just went in with some epoxy and filled in those and opened up the one slot again. and. Uh, it's never got hot on me, uh, never started melting anything. I've got my actual 220 line coming up into this box. Um, this has to run from right down there over. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, a good little trick to use to get yourself a 220 line. There's my other end on it I use. And the main reason I went with these is this end is like two, no, no, four. It was about four or fifty or five bucks or something for this end. You get an actual two twenty end, and I think they're running somewhere around like ten or thirteen dollars or something like that for just this end that just plugs into the wall. So I didn't think I'd be pulling that many amps on it, and I guess I was right because it never burned out either one of these things. So uh, yeah, um, it's a good little way to save you some money. All right, the things you'll need to complete this task is some electrical tape, possibly some duct tape. Some wire ends that match yours that you're going to be plugging this into. A razor blade. A Phillips or flathead screwdriver, depending on what you have there at the uh, plug. Some wire strippers and some cutting pliers or dikes. Alright, so let's get into this. Alright, for starters, you're going to take your extension cord. This is just going to be a demonstration. But what you want to do is you want to get it and measure it out. And find the exact center of those two. I got my ends both right together. So basically right here, right there would be my center. And I just take and just cut those pair of wire cutters. And once you got that, you've got two exact lengths of cord. Alright, so we cut our cord to length. Now we're going to go ahead and start stripping these insulation back. So you're going to take your razor blade and just easily go around the entire circumference until it's all the way around and then you start moving around it should pop loose and come off like that let's take off the insulation there you go. inside insulation all right so now we've got three wires and a good thing to remember is the 110 wires have to have three three wires in each bundle and all you're going to do is put green to green, white to white, and black to black. Pretty much like that right there. I'm just going to strip them back and tie them in. You'll probably need about a half inch or so of wire sticking out. Get close to half inch. And then all you'll do before you start twisting all your wires together, is you want to take and disassemble your plug. This one is a slip over, so I'm going to have to take this off. Now, my building, I actually wired most of it myself. 
because uh, I'm a contractor. And I just use these high output plugs. So it's basically like a 110 plug, but it actually is rated for 250 volts. If you can see it right there. So this is a higher output plug than normal. So I'm actually running 220 on it. So what you're going to do is if you're using these kind, you're going to have to slip this down and over your wire before you start doing anything. I've actually wired these in a few times and then forgot to this step and had to take the whole thing back off and it's a pain. It's more of an aggravation than a pain technically. Alright, so all you're going to do is just separate the wires out and just try to get the ones as close to each other as possible. I'm just going to kind of spin them together. Alright, so technically now I've only got three wires in all these carrying. I've got your hot, your hot, and your ground. The 220 uses two hot wires and only one ground on 220 system. There are a few, you know, different things to that, but most systems run two hots and one ground. Sometimes there's another ground, like an earth ground going through. But for this, we're just running one ground back and two hots. Alright, so I've got my plug here. You can see that this one here is green. Um, some of the regular plugs have uh, a white screw and a gold screw. The gold screw is usually hot and the white screw is usually um, ground, the white one. But in this case, these two are actually both gold. So we're going to be using the hots on those two. And technically it really doesn't matter uh, which end when you're hooking up the hot ones, it doesn't matter if it's flipped on the other plug downstream or upstream because it's going to be um, 110 coming out of each one of these, so it really doesn't matter that much whichever way you got it flipped. And we'll just shove these twisted wires down underneath the screws and tighten the screws down. and snow you want to squish that wire in there really good now this can also be used as how to wire up just regular ends onto a 110 I'm doing the exact same thing except the white is always going to be your ground and the green is always your ground too Unless somebody's done something weird beforehand, which is possible. Alright. Just a nice twist down. Okay. Pop off the screw. Just don't want these to come out while you're using it. It's going to be a bad day. Alright, so all those pretty tight. I'm going to just give it a little, a few little easy jerks just to make sure it doesn't go and just pop out of there on you. So that's what it should end up looking like if you're using this kind. Um, you can get the regular 220 ends that are really big, but for my shop, I knew what I was going to be plugging in and out, so I didn't really have to get that for mine. Um, most welders and RVs are going to have the bigger one, so you'll actually have more room to work here, so that would actually be better for you. Uh, for me, it kind of got a really tight little area, but um, should work. So we'll go ahead and close it all back up. And we've got one certain slot that has to line up to all the other ones.
And then once you have it lined up, all these screws should just throw and just take them all right down again. Okay, that's all tightened up. And I'll just move this cord around where we want it. And we'll put the clamp on. Alright, so there you go, ends on, she should be ready to go back into service, should be done, and you can wrap your whole wire with electrical tape just to keep it, but once you do that it's going to be very stiff, so you might want to just take some duct tape or some other type of tape. Stretch it out. Stick it and wrap it around. Yep. flexible that way and keeps all the wires nice and close together now you can't just leave them out um, you not really do anything with it but uh, you're going to be dragging it and rolling it up and putting it away it uh, is a little bit better to do this because if you had them separated they always seem to want to like flip underneath each other or something so that's the best way to do it all right, um, so I hope this helps somebody out there to make a 220 extension cord. Need anything, uh, just drop a comment in the comment section below. So consider subscribing, uh, clicking the notification bell, and please give this thing a like so it gets shared more. Um, but yeah, that's uh, how you make a 220 extension cord out of 110s. Um, Probably 100 feet is about the longest I would say go with a 110 like this. Because this is technically actually even a, a smaller 110. I've been using this technically. I had to do it today. I had to put a new end on it because I accidentally melted through it um, when I was using the welder. And I set it down on my thing. And I was welding underneath and didn't see that until I got up and it melted most of the insulation off in one area. So. Luckily it was only like two or three feet away from the end, so I just cut it off and moved this end back, but yeah, um, thought I'd go ahead and demonstrate this and just show you all y'all can do this, and it actually works really well. I, I've had this uh, extension cord now for probably about, uh, probably going on three years now, and I've never actually had a problem with it. It's always stayed cool, never heated up until today when I accidentally burnt it with the welder. 